we come to you this morning to just give you thanks first of all. Thank you Father for watching over us last night waking us up to the rise of a new day. Father we thank you for all the spiritual blessings that we enjoy in this life through your son Jesus Christ. And we thank you Father this morning for the opportunity to come together even though it's digitally to worship and to give you praise this morning. Father God, may the things that we say and do be acceptable into your sight and through what we give you this morning that you will receive all the glory and the honor. Bless us as we go into this worship experience. It is in the name of Jesus we pray it. Amen.
chapter 2, and we'll begin reading at verse number 22. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 22. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he shall not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for once again allowing your children to humbly approach your throne of grace. Father, first and foremost, we come asking for forgiveness of sin. And also, Father, we would like to offer thanksgiving for all that you have allowed us to this point. We pray, Father, that you continue blessing us as our hearts are steadied on today's worship. We pray, Father, for those that are sick and shut in, Father, and we pray that you always bring them to our remembrance so that we can comfort them in their hour of need. We pray also, Father, for the speaker of the hour. We pray that all that you have given him understanding to study, Father, that it comes to his remembrance as he parse out to your people, thus saith the Lord. We pray that what he says will enlighten those that are listening today online, and we pray, Father, that it will bring souls to your harvest. We ask also, Father, that you will just let us pray for the leadership of this world, Father. Those that are in high places, Father. We ask that we pray for their guidance and their health. But most of all, Father, we pray that they understand that you are the reason they are in the position they are in. And that they go throughout their day not being wicked towards the people, but giving them a way to be comforted as they walk throughout their days, Father, trying to do their daily activity. And we ask, Father, that us as your children never be hindered when we try to give those that are our neighbors, our friends, and our family, the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you once again for all that you have allowed us. And we pray, Father, that we can continue to grow in your grace and in your love. 
In Jesus, the Holy Spirit, in your name, we pray. Amen. There are some things I may not know, and there are some places I, I can go, I cannot go, but I am sure.
family, and friends. We want to welcome you to the digital worship space of the Church of Christ at Northside, located in Detroit, Michigan. To our visitors, we're so glad and so honored that you have joined us this morning, and we do consider you our honored guest. And it's our prayer today that your visit with us will be strengthening and encouraging and edifying, and that you will want to join us again because you have benefited by joining us this morning. We extend to you an open invitation to all of our activities of the Church of Christ at Northside, whether they're in the digital space or eventually in the physical space. And wherever you find yourself able and available, just come on back and join us as soon and as often as you possibly can. God has truly blessed us this morning. He's given us another day to enjoy. He's given us life and health and strength and right minds. And he's allowed us to get together this morning in this digital space to praise and to worship him and his son, Jesus the Christ. And for that and for all blessings, we are forever thankful and if you ever want confirmation for the fact that you are blessed, just consider that for one more day at least, you are among the land of the living and you are being seen and not being viewed. I'm going to ask that you'll pray with me and then we'll be into our message for the morning. Father God in heaven, we come before you at this time, first of all, to just give you thanks we're so thankful, Father, for the many blessings of life, for our health and for our strength and for uh, our right minds. We're so thankful for all of the material and the relationship and the uh, other uh, e uh, earthly blessings that you have given us. But Heavenly Father, we're most thankful for those spiritual blessings that you have given us uh, in and through your Son, Christ Jesus. Father God, we pray that right now, as we go into this message, that uh, the hearts and the ears of the hearers are opened, that they may receive with meekness your engrafted word. And as it befalls me, Father, I pray that you will hide me behind your cross. It's not my words that need to be heard, but your words. And it's not my will that needs to be done, but your will. That through it all, you may receive all of the glory and the honor. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I'm going to invite your attention to the second chapter of the gospel account as recorded by the physician Luke. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter 2, and we'll begin reading at verse number 22. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 22, we find this account. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he shall not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. This day is two days after Christmas. The presents have been given and received. The meals have been eaten, and the festivities, for the most part, have come to an end for another year. That hideous lime green scarf that you received will go into the drawer next to the hot pink one you got last year. That brown paisley tie 
will quickly find its way to the back of your closet, soon to be forgotten. The tree and all of the decorations will come down, and Christmas will be gone for another year. Or will it? The fact of the matter is this. Christmas really has nothing to do with the things I just mentioned a moment ago. Christmas can go on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, on and on, year after year, if we allow Jesus to be the central figure, not only of Christmas, but for every day of our lives. In our text this morning, the Lamb of God has already been born. God has stepped out of eternity and entered human history. The lamb that was promised, that was prepared, has now been provided. And our text takes us to Jerusalem for an event that occurred some 40 days after the birth of that lamb. Bible lets us know that when Jesus was eight days old, he had been circumcised as prescribed by the law. After a period of 40 days, Mary has reached the end of her purification period. And in these verses that we're going to examine this morning, we are allowed to go into the Lord's house with Jesus and his family as they take him to be presented to the Lord and redeemed, also according to the law. And while they were there, a special event occurred. Two old saints of God, a couple whose names were Simeon and Anna, were in the temple. They were there because the Holy Ghost has led them there. They were part of a faithful Jewish remnant that was looking for the appearance of the Messiah. And when they met Jesus that day, even though he was uh, only a 40-day-old infant, they are overjoyed and they began to lift up praises to the Lord. A few, a few moments this morning, I want to look into these verses and consider the thought, praise the Lord. What we see here can teach us some things about the manner of praise. And I think these verses have some lessons to teach us today. And they are lessons that we very much need to hear and let us just take a few moments this morning and think about the thought, praise the Lord. First of all, we need to look at the motive for the Lord's praise. Bible tells us that when Simeon enters the temple and takes the infant Jesus into his arms, the old man declares for all of us to hear the reasons for his joy. And in this speech, Simeon gives us a threefold motive for praising the Lord that is just as valid today as it was back then. First of all, in verses 26 through 30, the Lord is to be praised because of who appeared. And when we look at this, this story, the name Simeon simply means he who hears. And it's apparent from scripture that this man had been hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. He had been told that he would not die until he had seen Christ the savior of the world for himself. And when old Simeon 
sees Jesus, he's notified by the Spirit that this is the Christ. And Simeon begins to praise him because of who had entered the world. Just who was this baby? Verse 26 identifies him as the Lord's Christ. Verse 30 identifies him as the Lord's salvation. Now, Simeon understands who he is, but few others did. Eight days earlier, on the night that Jesus was born, some humble shepherds became aware of who he was. The heavenly angels knew who he was, but many others did not know who he was. The priests who circumcised him didn't know. The other people in the temple that day didn't know. The folks in Bethlehem also did not know. And most people today don't know who this child was and is. And let me just take a moment to tell you who this baby they named Jesus was and who he still is. First of all, he's God in human flesh. Secondly, he's the Lamb of God slain from before the foundation of the world. But thirdly, and even more importantly, he's the only savior of sinners and the only way to God. And Simeon here is excited because the promised one has appeared. He knew who Jesus was. And the question that you must answer is this. Do you know who Jesus is? Because if you do, you ought to praise him as Simeon praised him. But not only is he praised because of who appeared, he was praised because of why he arrived. Verse 30 through 32 tells us that as Simeon praises God the Father for this baby Jesus, he tells us a little bit about why Jesus came into this world. Look at what he says in verses 30 through 32. He says, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. We're told here that Jesus is salvation. We're told that he has come to change the world. The ministry that he will fulfill will impact the Jewish nation and will even reach out into all of the world. And in a nutshell, Simeon reminds us that Jesus came into this world to save all of those who would come to him by faith. Whether a person is a Jew or a Gentile, Jesus came to provide salvation to all who would receive him. And that is the promise of the word of God. The truth this morning is this. Jesus came into this world to set you and I free from our sins. And that's a true motive for praise that he would love you and that he would love me enough to die for us and to save us by his grace is a thought beyond the power of words to describe. And if we can't find any other reason to praise the Lord, surely we can praise him because he loved us so much that he endured the pain and the shame and the horror of the cross to set us free from our sins. But then thirdly, he was praised because of what he would accomplish. Verses 
34 and 35 tell us this. Bible says that Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Simeon here continues his praise by offering a prophecy of what Jesus would accomplish. And in these verses, this man speaks of three things, a stone, a sign, and a sword. The phrase fall and rising again of many in Israel refers to Jesus as the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Look at, with, look at uh, Psalms 118 and 22 with me, where, where the psalmist declares that the stone which the builders rejected is become the headstone of the corner. Look at the prophet Isaiah over in 8 and 14 declare, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of uh, Jerusalem. Many in Israel would stumble over the life and the ministry of the Lord Jesus. They would stumble in rejection and conviction but a few would rise again in salvation. And we find that same thing today. We find folks stumbling over the life and ministry of Jesus even now. We find folks stumbling in rejection now. But a few will even today rise again in salvation. Jesus is the stone. And I just want to state for the record that Jesus was the stone then and Jesus is still the stone now. He's the salvation stone. He's the judgment stone. And he's the touchstone that reveals men for what they are. Everything in your spiritual life revolves around how you answer one question. What do you think of Christ? And how you answer that question will determine where your soul stands in relationship to God. But he also talks about a sign here. That word sign means miracle. Jesus indeed is God's miracle. But instead of receiving him as the gift and the revelation of God, his enemies attacked him and crucified him. His birth was a miracle, but they attacked it. His miracles were ridiculed and attributed to the work of Satan. His character was called into question. They even mocked him as he died on Calvary. And they lied about his resurrection when he came out of the tomb three days later. And even today, many still mock this miracle by questioning his promise to return to the earth again. And then thirdly, Simeon talks about a sword. And of course, this was in reference to Mary's pain. She suffered as she watched Jesus fulfill the Father's plan. And that ultimate hurt came as she watched him dying on the cross, not only for the sins of the whole world, but her sins as well. Bottom line for all of this is this. Jesus Christ entered into this world to provide salvation for the lost. And we need to thank God for that wonderful truth. 
So the question is, do you know who this miracle man is? Is Jesus the chief cornerstone of your life? And when you stop to think of who arrived and why he appeared and what he accomplished, you can see that you have quite a motive for praising the Lord. But we also see here in this text the method of the Lamb's praise. As we see Simeon and Anna magnify the name of the Lord, we can learn a lot about how we ought to be praising him even today. You see, a, a lot of what's passed off these days as praise is nothing more than a show in the flesh. But there's a biblical way to offer the sacrifice of praise, and these two aged folk show us how to do it right. First of all, we see that their praise was vocal. See, Simeon didn't just see Jesus and rejoice in his heart. The Bible lets us know that when he saw Jesus, he opened his mouth and lifted up his voice in praise of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't keep what he felt bottled up on the inside. He let it out to the, to the glory of the Lord. And secondly, we also see that praise was visible. See, Simeon involved his entire person in the act of praise. He reached out, lifted up the baby Jesus, held him high, and praised the Lord. We see him vocally and visibly praising his Redeemer. Then Anna enters the picture in verse number 38. We see in verse 38 this, and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. She, we see here, blends her voice with that of Simeon, but she adds an additional element. See, while Simeon lifts his hands and his heart and his voice to the Lord, Anna also praises the Lord, but she tells others about what the Lord is doing. Her praise was vocal and visible and verbal as well. And I realize that we live in a day where Old-fashioned praising the Lord is out of vogue with some. Because some of us have gotten too sophisticated and too refined and too afraid of what others might think of them to be involved in vocal and visible and verbal praise. But let me tell you something. God still likes it and he still expects it from his people. Let me just go ahead and state for the record this morning, there's nothing wrong with vocal and visible and verbal praise to God for what he's done and what he's doing and what he will do in our lives. And if he's done anything for you, then you have a reason to praise the Lord. Our praise ought to be vocal and verbal and visible. And I just got the feeling this morning that the Lord likes it when his children brag on him to a lost world and in the company of the saints. You see a motive for the Lamb's praise and the method of the Lamb's praise, but I want you to finally see the ministry of the Lamb's praise. The Bible here lets us know in our text that as the name of the Lord was praised publicly, three precious things took place. And I want you to know, by the way, 
Those same three things still happen today when God's people will take the time to praise him for who he is and what he's done and what he's doing and what he's promised to do. Look at these three things that took place in, in, in praise that morning. First of all, we see that the sovereign was exalted. Look again with me at verse 28 and verse 38. Bible says that Simeon in verse 28 took him up, the baby Jesus, in his arms and blessed God and said. Verse 38 tells us about Anna that she spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. It brought glory to God when he was praised in the temple. And you need to understand something about the temple. See, see, everything in the temple was about ritual. But when Simeon and Anna broke the rituals and began to praise the Lord, the focus was taken off the ritual and it was placed on the Lord God of heaven. And even today, when the Lord is praised and exalted in his church and in his world, he's lifted up. See, sometimes we need to get out of our rituals. We need to get out of our way of doing things sometimes. And we need to take the focus off of those things and put the focus on lifting up his name so God will be exalted. We need to thank God for the ministry of praise because that's how we exalt him. That's how we lift his name up in the world. But we also see here the second part of the ministry. And that's this. The saints were edified. Verse 33 tells us that Mary and Joseph hear these praises. And they're given hope and they're given encouragement by the praises of these precious saints of God. And I just want you to know this morning that it still helps the Lord's people when they hear others praising his name. Realize something. There are days when you might not be able to feel a spirit of praise in your heart. There might be times when you're not in a position in, in, in your feelings to praise the Lord. But when you see one of your brothers or one of your sisters praise his name, it can connect with your heart and it performs a ministry in your life. I know what happens in mine. It lifts me up. It encourages me. And when I hear a precious child of God give that testimony, it touches my heart to the praise that they're offering up. And I can voice my own amen to their praise. So whenever you feel like praising him, don't hold back on nobody's account. Don't let nobody tell you. It, it don't take all of that. Don't let nobody's funny looks stop you from giving God his glory. Don't let anybody try to stifle it and quench the spirit. Just let it all out for God's glory because others need to hear that praise as well. But then there's a third ministry that we find in verse 38. Not only do we find the sovereign being exalted and not only do we find the saints being edified, we also find here in Anna's praise, the sinners being evangelized. Look at the end of verse 38 again. The Bible says, and she spake of him, oh, spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. She spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Bible says simply 
that Anna went out and told others about this baby that she had seen. She spake of him. And that had to be an awesome topic of discussion. And because she was verbal in her praise, lost folk heard where they could find Jesus as well. And I just want to let you know that you might never know what a little testimony and a little praise and a little witness for Jesus will accomplish. Because God can take the sacrifice of your praise that you offer up to him and use it to turn people's hearts toward him. There's something that's attractive about a child of God who's not ashamed to lift up Jesus' name. See, when Jesus was born, heaven was excited. Angels came down and shared the message with some shepherds. These men heard the praise of the angels and went to see for themselves. They met Jesus and came away praising his name also. Then when Jesus was taken to the temple at 40 days of age, he was greeted by the praises of two elderly saints who could not contain their love and their excitement for him. And all through his life, Jesus was praised by those who loved him. There were even two occasions when the Father himself spoke his own praise out of heaven. In Matthew chapter 3 and in Matthew chapter 17, he says this about Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this morning as we close out, I wonder how we are doing in the praise department. If you're saved, then you have every reason to praise him. And if you've been holding back on that praise, why not come to him and ask him for forgiveness and get busy exalting his name and edifying his people and evangelizing the lost through your praise and your testimony again? Please come to him this morning and make things right and let him restore you to a heart of praise. If you're not a saved child of God this morning, then you have a different set of needs. Notice verse 30 with me. Simeon talks about departing now because he has seen the Lord's salvation. I need you to understand very clearly this morning. It's of vital importance that you see God's salvation before death takes you out of this world. Because once death comes and takes you, it'll be too late. If you need to be saved this morning, there's no better time than right now because God's salvation is already here. John 3.16 so rightly declares that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's salvation is already here. He's already come. He's already executed and finished his ministry for the sins and the salvation of the world. That means you. And understand this morning, if Jesus came and he died for you, will you be willing to live for him? Will you be willing to come to him in faith, believing that Jesus indeed truly did die for your sins? That the whole reason for his appearing here on earth in the flesh was to take care of your sin problem. 
When you let that faith lead you to repentance, and this is your change or your turnaround, where you turn away from the ways of sin and now you turn to the to Christ. Will you let that faith lead you to confession, where you declare not only with your heart but with your life that Jesus indeed is the Christ and that he's the Son of God? And will you let it lead you to baptism for the remission of your sins? Because if you do that and you live a life that's faithful to him, it will lead you to a home in eternity with him one day. What is your need this morning? If you have a need, we just beg you right now to reach out to us with the contact information that appears on your screen. Either the, 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 the email address or the phone number. And we will immediately reach out to you and facilitate whatever your need is. If you need prayer this morning, we'll pray with you. If you need restoration, we'll aid you on that restoration journey. If you need to be baptized for the remission of your sins, we'll make that happen this morning. If you will just reach out to us, we can reach back out to you and make it happen. The message is yours this morning. And I hope and pray that somebody was encouraged and edified by God's word today. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you. And always remember that God loves you. And we at the Church of Christ at Northside do too. He is Chapter 11, starting at verse 23, as we focus our hearts on the Lord's Supper. For I received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. For after the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Heavenly Father, we humbly bow and direct ourselves now by the example of thy dear Son and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, asking your blessings on these emblems, this bread and cup that represent your Son's broken body and shed blood, shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. This in all grace, favor, and blessings we ask in his name. Amen. his name. Let all the people praise him. All saints.
Dear Heavenly Father, we once again approach your magnificent throne of grace. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to come together to worship you. We pray, Father, that while we are still absent one from one another, we ask, Father, that you just keep our minds and spirits up. And we pray, Father, that we remember to call one another and to encourage one another. Thank you for all that you have given us. And let us learn to count our blessings more that we count our troubles. In Jesus' name and in the Spirit's name, we pray, amen.
this ends our worship service online broadcast for today. We thank you for tuning in, and again, we hope that you were blessed in some way by joining us. We invite you each and every Sunday at 1030 a.m., as well as our other weekday Bible study and prayer broadcast that are scheduled during this time. We continue to pray for your health and safety. We are located at 18460 Conant Avenue in the city of Detroit. Be blessed.